you very much, Roger, for that, uh, interrupt, uh, that introduction, and uh, also for your friendly hospitality with uh, colleagues yesterday. Uh, it's, um, of course, a great privilege and, 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 um, and occasion to uh, be invited to give this, uh, this inaugural Foundation Day address for the Public Health Foundation of India. So, Professor Reddy, Sri Dayal, Mr. Lal, Dr. Manon, distinguished guests and uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have a number of slides I'm going to show you this afternoon and um, I hope this will um, help to keep you awake and engaged. It's a complex story we're going to be talking about, uh, but it's, um, it's one that, uh, as Professor Reddy has indicated, is very much on our agenda and, on, and coming on to um, um, the, uh, the policy agenda now in a world that's changing rapidly around us. Uh, and um, the issues for us as researchers are, uh, are very complex. And um, uh, all of us, all of us are learning uh, and having to learn rather rapidly just what the nature of the challenges are and how we're going to tackle them professionally uh, and as a community at large. But uh, before I begin to, to show the slides, I, um, uh, I said it's a privilege to uh, be invited to give the, the address and um, I'm very admiring of this, uh, of this initiative to set up the Public Health Foundation of uh, India. There's a particular need at this uh, time, as Professor Reddy has indicated, not just to grapple more effectively with long-standing and uh, sadly, in many cases, persistent public health problems uh, within uh, India and uh, indeed within uh, countries around the world, but um, we, uh, we must also uh, expand our agenda of um, research engagement and policy development in relation to some of the bigger issues that are coming onto the, uh, the agenda today. I said it was a pleasure to be, to be here as well, and uh, I should say that uh, I was first in Delhi um, back in 1964 when I was an undergraduate medical student, and um, it was part of a three-month visit to India that a number of us made as undergraduates. I spent um, about three weeks here, and that was primarily working in a uh, little leprosy colony beyond what were then the boundaries of the suburbs, but uh, is now swallowed up by the suburban expansion of the uh, place called um, Anangra, that uh, we get to by crossing the river um, just uh, alongside of old, uh, old Delhi, Chamli Chow. So um, it's always a pleasure to come back to, uh, to Delhi and, of course, to see the, uh, the changes that have occurred uh, in all those years since 1964. Now let me um, begin with the, the first of the, of the slides. Uh, before giving you an outline of what I want to touch on, uh, I would like to make this point that I think uh, all of us in the health sector have got a very important message to be making to the community at large about this emerging um, public and policy debate on sustainability. Uh, because I think a lot of the discussion has missed the point so far. We're concerned about effects on uh, economic productivity, on infrastructure, on uh, uh, tourist amenities, on iconic species. We haven't really talked about the fact that ultimately the risks are to human well-being, uh, to human health, to human survival. But we're talking about the need to um, achieve and maintain uh, environmental and social conditions uh, that will ensure uh, the good health of populations now and into the future. And in that sense, uh, as I've argued in this slide, uh, we ought to be seeing population health as a key, maybe the key criteria uh, when we talk about sustainability. So I'd like to invite you to bear that in mind uh, as we talk about these larger scale environmental health issues that um, are pressing on us today. Uh, I'm going to touch on each of these um, topic areas. Uh, I'm not going to read through these slides word by word. Um, and I should assure you that not all the slides are worth, most of them are pictures. Uh, but um, as you read through this list, um, I, I, I will just dwell on that first point for a moment and say that uh, it, it, it's always been easy to underestimate um, the role of environmental influences on population health. Because unlike those factors which are clearly measured at an individual level and differ between individuals, like cigarette smoking, and patterns of diet, and patterns of physical activity, and, uh, and sexual practices, and so on. Um, 
the environment is something that we all share, and populations move up and down together in terms of their health response to changing environmental conditions. And it's never been as easy uh, to characterize that relationship in precise quantitative terms. Much more difficult than uh, uh, attributing uh, risks of lung cancer um, comparatively between heavy and non-smokers, for example. So it has been a bit of a Cinderella area, and unfortunately that means that we're relatively a bit weaker than we should be, as we now face these huge environmental challenges uh, of a different scale, these large-scale uh, systemic changes to the environment around us, not local contamination or uh, microbial contamination of the um, uh, food and water, but an actual disruption of, um, of large systems, the climate system, ecological systems, the food-producing systems. Um, upon which uh, we depend. Another important point at the beginning is to understand this, this population strategy that we're talking about, that um, the, the task for us is to find ways of creating healthy conditions or healthy earth conditions for whole populations. And this diagram really picks up an idea that uh, a British epidemiologist, Geoffrey Rose, first expounded uh, the population strategy, and he pointed out that most of our um, uh, attention uh, of the formal healthcare system is out there on the right-hand side for those, uh, that minority that's at very high risk of disease, that have extremely high blood pressure, for example. That's where the system tends to focus. And what it's seeking to do, of course, uh, is to uh, return that group to good health, remove that 5% from that distribution to shift them back uh, into the, uh, the general mass. But the real task is to shift the distribution of risk for the whole population across the the left. And that's, that's the task of, uh, of public health. Via all sorts of strategies, uh, not just something that um, trained public health practitioners can do on their own, they must work with many sectors of government. And that, again, is a message that I think is coming through more strongly now and that the uh, Public Health Foundation of India is being quite explicit about embracing uh, the, the need to extend our repertoire of collaborations and methods uh, of policy <coughs> development so that we can work uh, with and across other sectors, other parties, to achieve these, um, these great and enduring changes uh, in patterns of living that will confer better health. If you look at the history of uh, developed countries with respect um, to the, the penalties paid by urban populations over time, you'll recognize that back in the 19th century, uh, there were major risks from infectious diseases, uh, epidemic outbreaks, the rise of um, uh, problems with air pollution from um, dirty factories, uh, in and around cities. In this century, the rise of uh, road trauma. Um, but notice that those three have all, to some extent, or to a large extent, been brought under control, although infectious disease is showing a tendency to rise again for all sorts of reasons and characteristic of our modern world. But if you move across to the right, you see a couple of um, things that are not being brought under control that, again, reflect uh, major shifts in the way we lead our lives, the increasing contribution of uh, uh, urban industrial uh, areas to uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, and all the consequences that will flow through to human health, health and well-being from the um, effects of climate change. And of course the rise of overweight and obesity which we're seeing all around the world, again reflecting this systemic shift in the way that um, societies lead their lives. Now, you can uh, visualize where a country like India would sit with respect to uh, this diagram as well, that uh, you still, of course, are wrestling with many of these infectious disease problems. And it's uh, very clear to me when I come back to Delhi each time that there's still a problem of urban air pollution. Um, and with lots of nano cars about to be unleashed onto the roads, um, you'll have to wonder which direction that graph will go in the future too, I suppose. But maybe the metro uh, will help to solve that. Uh, but the point here is that these are all big rises and falls in rates of um, uh, risks to health and in disease rates in populations that reflect the environment at large and ultimately uh, are remedied by, um, uh, by big public health and social policy. If we continue on the path that we are at the moment with respect to um, energy use and, uh, and uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, and to maintaining ways of life that involve systemic uh, energy imbalance, uh, then ultimately that's not sustainable respect to the consequences for health. Just to pick up a couple of these, uh, with respect to respirable particulates in big cities around the world, you can see that um, uh, in, in, 
today's world, most of the problems now are in developing countries as they go through industrialization, whereas the, uh, the, the levels of, uh, uh, of particular pollution uh, have fallen uh, fairly steadily in many of the developing countries.